from the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission, Pastor Tim Garino, pulling up my Italian quotient for the day of guests <laughs> in studio. Tim, good morning to you, buddy. Good morning. Thanks for having me on, Rob. Pleasure is mine, sir. Hey, you guys were talking earlier about jobs. I yes. was listening to that thing. Let me just share this real quick story here. I had, uh, When I was in college, I got out of service, and um, I was in between Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan. There was no um, money for – they took away the GI Bill and all that stuff. And I had to work my way through college. And I was in the oil fields in western Nebraska and eastern Colorado. And um, I took the job, worked with – I forget – uh, company we repaired oil wells out there the oil was down the faster you went so make a long story short that they did the uh, uh wrench in the rods and the oil comes up but i was the guy way up top catching the pipes as they <laughs> throw the pipes up it was about 200 feet in the air oh and then you had to stack them and then let them dry out and find the holes and i could see where the tornadoes were coming in <laughs> Awesome. But it was it was real funny because it was a windy day, and I was skinny back then. I was real skinny back then. I was probably about 140 pounds soaking wet, maybe a lot less. And we're catching them, and, and I'm all oiled and slick and everything. And next thing I know, you see a tornado from far off, and I'm telling them, and it's getting closer and closer. And they, finally, they yell up at me, and they say, Tim, uh, your pants, get your pants. And I was so oiled up because when you catch the pipes, you're full of oil, mm -hmm. and you got to put them and put them on these, like, forks. And my pants were completely down to my ankles because I was focusing. <laughs> Even my underwear, everything was down, and I was focusing on the tornado and everything coming up. And uh, but got paid real well for that job, and that was a long yeah. time ago. So as a pastor, I do have some crazy stuff. And well, that, that is—I don't know if you knew this or not—and mm -hmm. I think you get credited for it in some sites. But that is now called. Uh, Nude oil pipe catching. Yeah, that's right. And it's a huge event now at the Nude Olympics. <laughs> I'll I tell you what, it was something else back then, but got paid a lot. By Wednesday, we were in overtime, got paid a lot of money. Actually, it paid my whole uh, two semesters of the next year of college. I only worked there uh, three months that, over the summer, and it made a lot of money. But you, you were in overtime. You stayed on that well until it was working. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever been so absorbed in a task that I would not know <laughs> <laughs> that my pants and underwear had fallen down. Well, I'm watching because the pipes come up fast, uh -huh. and you've got to catch them because they're on a claw. And, and as soon as the, the pipe, you grab it, they let go of the claw. And the pipe can't drop down, so mm -hmm. you have to catch it. I'm all oiled up, and then I'm watching the tornado as it's coming closer because we wouldn't shut down until it got about two miles away. Then you started shutting everything down. And me being up top, I didn't want to get blown away. The guys in the bottom, they were okay. They could run to cover, but I had to come all the way down. Well, once the tornado <laughs> starts throwing around oil pipe, I would think it would get very exciting very quickly. Oh, it, it, it did. It did. Could you not slide down the pipe <laughs> yeah. like a firefighter? Well, you, you could, but the pipe wasn't connected because once they once you caught it they like the, the the claw let go and went back down the only way i got back down is the claw would come up and i'd grab onto it and go, you, it was illegal you couldn't do those things but you did it anyway and you grabbed onto the claw and they drop you down that's the only way i could get down back then it, is that days. when you found god uh, <laughs> in the air, I, staring down a tornado. actually i was a, I, I was a, I was a brand new believer at the time and i did a lot of praying i <laughs> yeah, did a lot well. of praying because i wasn't afraid of heights the other guys were afraid of heights so i got on there hey but i i didn't come here to talk to you about that today <laughs> but that's but, a good story though <laughs> it, i'll tell you what i got some stories in, uh it's yeah something else but uh just to uh, share with you the 604 project mm -hmm. um you, you guys have helped us in that and it's come a long way and it's really going fast the remodeling is is probably going to be totally remodeled by the, by tell, the, catch us up first right. tell everybody what the 604 project 604 is. project is the the temporary housing for homeless families it's the only temporary housing for homeless families you heard that lady just talking recently at telemon where people have, where families have to stay in hotels and all this other stuff it's going to be only temporary family housing for homeless folks in jefferson morgan berkeley county and it's going to have six apartments it's the six it's at 604 west king street right next to the main rescue mission across from the uh the mill that's being remodeled and it's amazing uh all of a sudden it's like um uh it's just they're get i mean it's getting done it's, it's getting done faster um we got a few major uh things yet to get done but the wiring is almost done the plumbing's almost done the city put the pipe connected to the meter now our construction guy has to get the pipe and connect it to the house for the water and once that's done uh the sprinkler systems are going to be coming in in the next week or two um the outside if you've seen the outside they're getting that all done i mean this the, the brand new roof on it it is almost there and probably by the end of may it will be completely remodeled and then we got to furnish it orsini's uh gave us a great great deal 
on all the appliances. Uh, we thank God for that. Uh, Mountaineer Kitchen and Bath gave us a great, great deal on all the cabinetry and stuff like that for the kitchens and stuff. Um, it is awesome. I mean, things are coming together. Once they throw up the sheetrock, it's just getting it painted and we're ready to rock and roll. We're still short about 400000 uh, to pay for everything, uh, including the staffing for two years. So uh, we're really making a plea to the community, uh, step up if you can help us. This is history making because this is the only animal, the 604 project that is out there. It's not a, it's not, uh, you heard the lady, there's no place for homeless families to go. Uh, she said they, I mean, I, I couldn't make this stuff up. The statistics are there. Here's an opportunity. Yes, it's only six units, six apartments, and people say, well, why can't there be more? Well, I hope this is inspired, and it is actually. I can't go into all the detail, but there are other agencies and groups now that are looking at what we're doing, and they're going to I help, help me with this word, replicate. Is that the right word? Replicate's yes. good. Thank yep. you. You're the writer. I'm yep. not. <laughs> Re replicate uh, what we're doing. They have come. I've met with many 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 agencies and groups i can't name them and um but they're now doing thinking about doing transitional uh housing for homeless families and um so we're hoping this is inspiring to others um <clears throat> it, it's gonna it takes a lot of money because we're not government funded and uh so we're asking the public uh if they could step up and help out every donation matters from five dollars to whatever you want to donate you can go to online martinsburg union rescue mission com and um, hit the donate button and put the 604 project. Excuse me, I got a sinus infection. I've been out in my garden. Oh, goodness, you got I've the allergies. All, I've been off all this week. I got When I'm done here, I go back out to the garden. Um, but, you're a busy man. But, yeah. but all that oil coverage explains your smooth skin, yeah. so you're good. Yeah. You, you haven't aged at all. I don't know about that. But, uh, yeah, and it's, it's, it's exciting to see all this happening. We got a couple other things that are taking place at the mission that are really happening. Uh, of course, with our thrift store there, we serve a lot in the community, uh, vouchers where people can, uh, that can't afford clothing come in. We serve thousands of families, uh, every uh, men, women, and children and families every month uh, coming in, getting clothes, furniture, all that kind of stuff. Plus the thrift store, what you spend there is donated back to the rescue mission. All that stays at the rescue mission. The neat thing is whatever you donate stays at 608 West King Street. It doesn't go to some headquarters somewhere where nobody knows you. Um, and it's just amazing the people we're helping and, and reaching out to. John Gilstrap. So on the 604 project, mm -hmm. um, you got six units that are being built. Two questions, actually. Do the families pay any? Is it Do they pay to stay? No, they don't pay to stay. And how long can they stay? It, it, each family will be different. It, it, each family comes in with a different story. If they come in and, they're, and they don't have any uh, uh, drug issues or alcohol issues, it will probably be shorter. If they have uh, addiction issues, it'll probably be a little longer because you have to deal with those issues first to get uh, things uh, stable. And then kids get into schools and stuff like that. We'll get them into the local schools and stuff, get them plugged in to the local agencies, uh, recovery centers, all that kind of stuff to get them the help they need. So each, I, I would say 18 months at the most until we transition them out into a permanent housing situation because it takes other agencies time to get them connected um again if it's a recovery issue then they can go to recovery while still staying with their family homeless family which usually that's not the case you have to be separated uh, from your family and nine, nine times out of ten the family suffers because then you don't have be, is be that there. what you see is that what you see is the likely uh mainstream tenant there will I don't know what you call them uh, uh, call it tenant people who are going to be in recovery is that is that um, sort of the focus so, of the some of the families are there because of recovery issues because of addiction issues some of the families are there uh, I would say 80 percent of the families that will come one of the one of the uh, parents will have an addiction issue and that's why they are in the situation they're in um, other ones could be they just um, struggle holding a job some some other issues um family issues so they get put out we deal with a lot of folks that um uh, they burn their bridges with their family and they get put out and then they got nowhere to go and uh they go back and forth in hotels and stuff we had a situation where the mom came with a little girl and i can't say the names or anything and we connected them with social services and in the process uh we discovered the little girl wasn't in school. She hasn't been in school for a long time, and she was of school age. And um, 
once we started getting closer to getting the mom connected uh, into some services, she disappeared because she was afraid her, her child would be taken from her because she's been living in her car with her child going from place to place and hasn't been in school. So, so it just disappeared. And that happens a lot because when they're homeless and they're, and they're moving from place to place, the kids are not in school. How is this fundamentally different than what I would call a homeless shelter? Um, they have their each individual apartment unit privacy to work out their issues. Uh, most in individual homeless shelters, there's a curtain or there's a, what they call those separation things. Um, I don't know, office separation. Partitions. Things. Partitions, thank you. He's, he's, he's got the words. Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> what I do. Hey, that garden's killing me. My <laughs> sinus is killing me. But thank you. And, and that's the problem is that it, it, it's open. There's no privacy. There's no time to work out the issues. Um, uh, they always feel like they're being there's somebody watching them or something like that. Here they'll have their own apartment. We'll have a caseworker uh, from nine to five working every day, Monday through Friday, connecting them to those things. Then we'll have shelter attendants uh, around the clock, still connecting them, still working with them to where uh, each unit is private, but each unit they'll be getting ministered to daily. Uh, we'll connect them with groups. We'll connect them with agencies. Hope to connect them with church sponsorships that churches come in and look out after them, make sure that they're getting connected, building a bigger net because for a lot of these families, their net is gone. They have nothing to fall back on. You and I have family to fall back on. They have nobody to fall back on. Um, so that's that building that net, that community uh, back again in their lives and getting them connected to the right places and people. It, it is it is unique in this area because there is no such thing as it. Um, I came from California. We had it out there. I'm excited about it. I'm excited to be this close. I didn't think we'd be this close in finishing it this soon um, and getting it going. It's going to be amazing. Um, it's going to be challenging because sure. when you're dealing with families and kids, it's challenging. They're going to come in with a lot of stuff. It takes a, a month or so for them to trust you, to open up. They're not going to just come in and be honest with you on everything up front because they've been burned so many times. Um, so they hold things back. So it's going to take a month or two to build that relationship of trust uh, and getting them plugged in. Will the families find you or do you go out and find the families? Uh, nine times out of ten, they find us. Mm. Yeah. Matt Harvey. Obviously, uh, financial donations are the best but could is there an opportunity for people to donate labor yes um, in fact when the sheetrock goes up we're going to be doing a lot of painting and we could uh, save a lot of money if a, if we have uh, groups come in and paint for us pay for the paint do all the stuff we have a, a gentleman that's going to put together our um, uh, benches and picnic tables for our yard um, we have a uh, uh, we're going to order one of those uh, play set things for kids I don't know what they call them, jungle gyms or whatever. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> You're slacking over there, author. I know, I know. Well, you know, I, you know, I don't know what they're called. You know. They needed you yeah. and you weren't there for them. Yeah, so we got some folks doing that for us, and we're excited. There's some things, but right now getting the house where we needed it to get, you had to have certain people that we couldn't really get volunteers to do that stuff because the house was old and we had to get everything way up to code right. and above so uh, but there will be some things and then when it's open we're going to need volunteers constantly volunteers to help with the families during the day a uh, bunch of things we're going to have them volunteering for and that will all be uh posted and displayed <clears throat> what does help with the families mean uh anywhere from um getting them uh, rides and stuff sometimes they come in with vehicles that are pretty beaten up uh we'll have to volunteer we'll have to see if we can get a, a place that we can get the vehicles fixed and repaired uh, so that mom dad both whoever's working can get back and forth to their job um taking kids back and forth uh helping them with school uh clothes which we have next door at the thrift store but taking mom in there uh there's like almost like a mentoring where the we can get some ladies to come in that are solid ladies to come in and mentor some of these women uh working with their kids helping them get through some issues because um Mom, dad, and kids, when they're, doing, when they're living in a motel room or from uh, car to car, it, they're in survival mode. They're constantly in survival mode. And they're not, what's the word? They're not acting normal, okay? It's, it's constant. They're very high up. They're very tense. Uh, they're very wallish, you know, put mm -hmm. the walls up. So you got to get them to bring them walls down, just really get inside and start working with them and start finding. Same with the guys. We want to get some guys in there to mentor some of the men, uh, the guys that are in there, and bring them to help them keep their job, 
take care of their family, work on some things. Um, if it's recovery, they would have sponsors. I don't know what they call them, coaches, sponsors. Now AA used to be sponsor, now it's coach. I don't know, same thing though, um, term. Because all those things are important that you surround them with people of accountability, but also that people are pouring into them good things, pouring into them um, education, all kinds of stuff to help them get to the next step. Similar to what we do with the guys at the mission. We keep pouring into them so they can get to the next level, get jobs, get back out there, be productive, be positive, be contributors back in society. Do, do you have relationships with employers? Yes, yes. And uh, we've, uh, in fact, a lot of our guys are employed. In fact, um, 14 last month found full-time jobs. Last year, we had 144 guys find full-time jobs. I forget what the number is for this year. It's on our website. I think we have close to 30-some guys already full-time jobs this year. All the different companies. Um, in fact, um, what we do is when the guys come in after they've been with us a few months and clean and sober, the key is clean and sober, we, we try not to send people out right away because people will say, well, all they need is a job. No, they don't. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> they don't need a job uh, because um, that's a bad situation. We had a, uh, a guy come in recently, and um, there was a young man that came in, and he tested positive for cocaine. And um, next thing you know, his boss came in from a local company, and sitting there pleading with us saying, um, because if you test positive coming into our program, then we uh, tell you, okay, you could stay, but you, there's a 60-day program. You stay, uh, you enter the 60-day program, you stay clean and sober for 60 days, um, and then you can get into our program. Um, but you can't work during that 60 days. It's like going into a rehab. Well, this young man had a job. So he went back and told his boss that we kicked him out of the mission. And his boss came to us and started pleading to us, oh, this young man only made a mistake one time. He only took cocaine one time. I said, well, he lit up the, the, the urine cup. He lit it up. I mean, lit it up. It wasn't just, well, I think he's using it. It was like bright red, like bright, brighter than the, you know, like, yeah. And then make a long story short, I said to him, hey, I see on here you lived with your mom. How, why didn't you live with your mom anymore? Well, he fessed up. He got kicked out because he was using drugs. The same thing. Issue. But that was only once. That was only once. That's right. <laughs> Remember that. And that's what I said. And, 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 and here's the sad part is that his boss was pleading to us. He was making $2,400 a week. Wow. His, yeah. <clears throat> and he had no money to stay at a motel. Well, where do you think his money went? Right. Cocaine. It ain't cheap. And his boss is pleading with us, saying to us, well, you're kicking him out. I said, no, we're not kicking him out. We're giving him a choice. He could stay here, get clean and sober. And in 60 days, if he's clean and sober... He'd go back to work and get a job somewhere. I said, I would think as, as you're, uh, you're his employer that you would give him those 60 days to get clean and sober. Instead, you're telling us that we're the bad guys. I said, we're not kicking him out. We're giving him a choice. He can stay clean or sober and stay here for 60 days, or he can keep his job and get an apartment and keep doing cocaine. I said, because who's going to stop him? Well, what did he think he chose? He left. Well, I, I would hope he would be a good worker at $2,400 worth of cocaine a week. Yeah, yeah. And, but my point is, why would you as a boss be pleading for someone that's doing cocaine as your worker and not plead for him to get help? Instead, you're pleading for him to keep his job where he then can continue to buy dope, you know, at $2,400 a week. He left. But he had a choice. Maybe the employer mm -hmm. didn't understand. Oh, the employer did. Okay. <laughs> I think he's, you were there. I think uh, he's implying a no, connection between yeah, the, the, two. the The bottom line was we were the bad guys because we were holding him accountable yeah. and said he had to be clean for 60 days. So we became the bad guys. And I said, no, we want to keep him clean and sober. I said, he, could, he was only 24 years old. He could die. Cocaine, yeah. cocaine. He started I said, and you're pleading for this guy. Oh, he only did it once. He kept saying to me. He only, I said, didn't you just hear him? He just got kicked out of his mom's house because of what? He was doing drugs. It ain't the first time. I said, he's, he's, he's lying. Now, he might be a good worker and all that, but what if he's at work one day and he's driving a forklift and he's on cocaine and he runs over somebody or he pushes the thing and they fall off and it kills somebody under, uh, on the next aisle and you take a drug test and he tests positive for cocaine. Oh, uh, but that's what you want? And, and, and Tim, he knew that, that yeah. he was... Just a couple seconds left here. Uh, real quick, by the way, do you have families lined up for those six apartments? No, but I'm sure we're not going to have a hard time. Uh, I've already had phone calls, <laughs> and I've tried to explain to people we're not open yet. And uh, so I'm sure they've moved on. Um, it, I'm sure we're not going to have a hard time filling those six apartments. 